Good afternoon, I'm meteorologist Alyssa Andrews alongside meteorologist Terry Lyson, also our executive weather producer. And Terry, earlier today, you wrote a really interesting blog about some of the first for snowflakes in the Boston area. It's funny, all you have to do is say snow and that immediately perks everyone's interest and gets the clicks going. So. Yeah, I mean, it feels like it's early to talk about snow because it's been so warm and so dry. But in reality, here's our sort of milestones map here. Uh, there are like 39 shopping days till Christmas. And it's right around the corner. And especially like you said, with it being such a dry and mild fall season, this is the time though when it sneaks up on you when you get that first bite of yep. really cold air, the cold front moves through, but we just haven't seen much snow or much precipitation out of that so far. Right. So do we think that's gonna continue on into the winter well, season. Interesting, we should ask. Let's take a look. First off, I'm assuming you're done with your Christmas shopping. 39 days left, it's... Uh... Like, when you said that, my heart <laughs> like, dropped oh, no. because right, I have we'll skip not past even that. started. <laughs> we'll skip right past that. Um, so the average for snow, uh, measurable snow in Boston, um, over the 150 or so years is November 28th, which just so happens to be Thanksgiving next Thursday. Mm, okay. Um, so that, again, this is a w wide range of, uh, over the many, many years, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen on that day and actually probably won't, uh, but that's just the average. Well, and that's what sounds crazier than only having 39 days of shopping left until Christmas because where we're standing right now, thinking about a first snowfall in Boston, yeah. On doesn't Thanksgiving like in November doesn't seem like it's coming. I mean, gosh, that's what, 10, 15 days from now. So. Yeah, it, yeah not, it's not too far off at all. And then, so last year we didn't get our first measurable snow until December 6th, so about a week later. And that's generally been the trend over the last several years to get uh, later and later frosts, later and later snowfalls. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just been kind of how we've been rolling lately. Um, October 10th, 1979 was the earliest ever on record for Boston. That's Ooh. pretty early. I mean, just thinking about, think about this recent Halloween, October 31st, and we had right around that time, we're talking record-breaking high temperatures. Right. We're looking at temps in the 70s and 80s. So to think um, that was the earliest snowfall here, well, October, October 10th. You and I believe on that day, I'd have to look back, there was actually a few inches of snow inland. Like Boston had like a trace or wow. something, and there actually was accumulation inland. So anyways. There's um, certainly some validity, though, to when people say you never know what to expect in this fall season. And uh, uh, no doubt about it. Anywhere. Yeah, from brush fires to snow. All right. Um, so anyways, as we said, first measurable snow, November 28th. If you're thinking about, okay, when, was, when are we going to actually get some decent or, you know, shov shov shovelable snow? On average in Boston, it's December 11th. Um, Worcester and inland areas are a little earlier. So mm -hmm. this, this is for Boston. So figure like a week to 10 days earlier if you're anywhere from Metro West to Worcester. Um, and then for three inches or more, the average is just after Christmas. Okay, so right after Christmas. And so the, the first one inch snowfall, December 11th, and then we're just a couple of days away from, on average, when Worcester, you talked about more inland getting that first mm -hmm. snowfall first, and even larger amounts of snowfall earlier, we're three days away from Worcester, on average, receiving right. its first measurable snowfall. So. Yes, and that's certainly, we're certainly gonna go past the average this mm -hmm. year. Um, there is no snow, yes, we'll talk about a little bit later, no snow in the forecast in the short term whatsoever. Um, and so what's interesting is uh, recently, like, so you say, okay, average for average first three inches, average first one inch. We haven't had a snowstorm in Boston of four inches or more for now 994 days. The bottom number on that chart, that's a record for Boston. It's the longest stretch we've ever gone between um, storms with at least four inches or more of snow. It, so February 25th, 2022 was the last time. That's wow. crazy. I wonder if the road crews are getting a little bored with our, with our snowfall rates I think they're probably right looking now. for some, the plow drivers are like, where's the money where's at? Where's something right? to do, yeah. Um, it, that's, a, that's one of the most remarkable like, uh, records I think I've ever heard of here in Boston. The fact that I would never have guessed 10, five, 10 years mm. ago, we could go a th month. almost a thousand days. Wow. So, and a week from now, it'll be a thousand days since we had four inches of snow accumulating in Boston. Mm. That, that's just silly. So it makes you kind of wonder like, are we due? That's that's how I keep thinking. Right. I know the four. If you look at the the forecast and the reality, I mean, we're in a severe drought right now. So what mm -hmm. does that say? You get a cold front moving through, and it's maybe forecasting rain. We're looking at that, but you know, we're in a drought. It's we know, being nothing. Eh, yeah, right. It's probably gonna be nothing. But I do have this feeling, of like that feeling of like, are we due for? Are one? we due? Yes. Are we due for? We're certainly due for rain right yeah, now. Are we due for a big winter? Mm -hmm. uh, again, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We actually have a little. Uh, tease here next Thursday. Oh, oh yeah, you were you were in the rest of the weather team taped a winter weather forecast uh, yes. that'll be airing next Thursday. 
Um, and it's kind of a fun, I don't want to give too much away, but it's kind of a fun look at the winter forecast. I, I know you guys had a blast. Doing yes, it. I do think people are going to enjoy that one because it gets you the information, everything you need to know for the winter season, what we're expecting and how we're forecasting it and really what we're planning on in mm -hmm. the weather department um, in, in a little fun kind of way. Yeah, yeah we won't say any more than that. Um, anyways, look at the last two winters. So 12.4 inches, 9.8. Those the, That's the snowfall total in Boston the last wow. two winters. Um, so basically nothing compared to our normal winters. Um, you have to go back to 21, 22 to have something slightly above average. But if you just look, look at the last 10 years in general, like overall, um, we've been way below average. I mean, that 14, 15 winter obviously oh stands out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the 10 year difference right here. And we do average, what is it on the order of every 30 years or, yes. or something? We, yeah. we kind of look at averages and, and yeah. update all this. That's that's a pretty insane spread right there. Yeah, I mean, you take out that insane winter of 14, 15, and Ooh. you basically can say, like, the snow has, it, there hasn't been snow much around here. We had a couple of decent years, but, um, you know, is that is this a trend? Is it going to continue? Is it just the fact that, like, last year was El Nino? There's, you know, there have been big atmospheric things going on the last couple of winters. Um, you know, time will tell. And this was 10 years ago, but what do you, do you, what do you remember about leading into that winter season when you got that much snow in Boston? So, uh, not to, like, not to toot our own horn, but we actually, we did it. We, we, it. Do, we do these winter weather forecasts every year, and we did one back in 2014, and our forecast was for a very cold, very mm -hmm. snowy winter, which um, we hadn't had a lot of at that time. Now, we didn't forecast, obviously, 110 I inches. mean, who does? We <laughs> I believe we might have, for we forecast well above the average. I don't know mm -hmm. if we put a number on it, but, I mean, no one could have forecasted right. uh, that amount of snow. But we definitely, the signs were there atmospherically in, in many different, for many different reasons for a big winter. Um, and we haven't seen one since. Totally like different yeah. feel from, from this year heading into the winter. Yeah, season. I mean, you, you can't even, I, I know the folks that lived here back then, remember, I have vivid memories, I'll never mm -hmm. forget it, um, but it's, it's now so far in the back of my mind. Oh, wow. Like I mean, that. to see that, that graph, that really put it in, into perspective. Yeah, just how yeah. different it is going into this winter. Yeah, so there's two of the last, uh, two of the least snowiest winters are on the top five. So 23, 24 and 22, 23, mm -hmm. top five least snowy winters have happened in the last couple of years. Maybe this, maybe this winter is up on that list again. Well, again, you'll have to tune in next Thursday, mm -hmm. but early signs uh, are not pointing towards anything, uh, anything big this winter. Um, what, what, I guess, what, what would you, would you, are you, would you prefer a snowy winter? Like, what do I you? I kind of would. Okay. Now, this is why I was really curious about yeah. um, what you remembered going into that really extreme heavy snowfall winter 10 years ago, because moving to New England, mm -hmm. I was so excited for all oh, the yes. snow. So and maybe, maybe you're jinx the whole thing. Since I know. You got I here, feel we like I did. Snowed. I may have. Um, yeah. I mean, we have not had a classic New England winter for a little bit. I um, think, I think I feel like if it's going to be this cold, it needs to snow, but we haven't even seen, you know, we've yeah. seen pretty mild temperatures too on top of how incredibly dry it's been so right. I feel like but then there's also that flip side and weather's gonna do what weather's gonna do especially and, in New England yeah you know. um, but we cer it certainly would be nice if we could get a white Christmas we haven't had one of those mm -hmm. in a while either here um, it's really been um, sort of a we've been in a snow Christmas snow drought for quite a while most of the last several Christmases have all been brown and green, not uh, white. Yeah. Um, Boston, on average, I believe it's like once every eight or nine years. But you go north and west of the city, um, like up towards 495, Lowell, Worcester, and it's about a 50-50 chance to have. And a white Christmas is technically defined as one inch of snow on the ground Christmas morning. So you look out and there's at least an inch of snow. It doesn't have to be fresh snow, it just has mm -hmm. to be snow on the ground. So a little bit more than measurable snow, just at least right. get to that one inch mark. That's actually a little bit lower than I thought it might be for Boston to get that few of white Christmas. I think it has a lot to do with Boston being, the ocean still being so warm early in the winter, and a lot of the early storms tend to be some sort of mixy thing in Boston. It's hard to like get snow to stick in the early parts mm. of winter, better chance later on. But um, again, even in those areas that 50, 60% out in Northern Worcester County, those areas have gone several Christmases without seeing snow on the ground. Now so that's, I that's think we're due, another tough. thing we're due for is, yeah. a, is a white Christmas. Yeah, a little dusting, give us a dusting or something, right. you know, it doesn't give have to be pulling the plows and, and all of that, but hey, just something would be, would be fun Agreed. for Christmas. So back to um, the lo the regular old forecast. Big. So as of this, it's now 3:41 as we're taping this right now, and 3:56 the moon will start to rise uh, out of the east, and it will be full officially at 4:29. So like, if you're driving home tonight, uh, it'll be hard to miss. It's a full beaver super moon. Um, our fourth super moon of the year, um, and a fourth and final.
Okay. Yeah. It'll be definitely fun to look at it my home. So just for those that don't know, supermoon is basically um, the time when the moon is closer to Earth in its orbit than other times of year. And it just so happens that that's happened like four times over the last several months. And so it looks a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter than your average full moon. And it really does, makes a difference. And it has coastal impacts as well. It does, and I think we'll get to that in a minute, um, but there will be sort of certainly higher astronomical tides this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, but the brush fire risk is not going anywhere. You just noted before we came in, they extended the red flag mm -hmm. warning through tomorrow. Yep, and through 6 p.m. tomorrow, so gosh, I mean, this Another is the big story day. in weather now. Um, incredibly dry, incredibly dry. Yeah, the relative humidity is today. Um, I should have dropping I, to 15 percent. Yeah, I saw. That's I wish I loaded nice. that map in. Right now, in southern New England, it's averages like 15, 20 percent the relative humidity. And if you have, if anybody has like a humidity thing at home, like a little dial or something, like 5, 10, 15, 20 percent is really low. Mm -hmm. Like that's when you want to turn on the humidifier in the winter because mm -hmm. everything starts to be shocky and clingy. Right, yeah. And and also another just to compare numbers here, when this starts to drop below 35-30%, where we start to notice and look at it, we're at 15, 15 yeah. to 20 on average now. So that's very, very really low, dry. Very so dry not air. only is the brush on the ground dry, but mm -hmm. the air just itself is dry. So and it has it's certainly been windy the last several days, it's gonna be a little gusty tomorrow. So again, mm -hmm. Any sort of spark, uh, any sort of, um, you know, you should avoid any sort of fires outside. Right. I mean, and because, cool. and especially this time of year, the, the leaves have now fallen off the trees. Yeah. It's been so dry. Yeah. And so when you get that breeze picking up with the mild temperatures, it, those these conditions are just perfect for, yeah, right, for, for fires, fires thriving. Yeah. So you'll be on this weekend, uh, as usual, on Saturday and Sunday night, and it looks like a pretty nice weekend. Super nice. Once again, I mean, I've, I've talked about such nice weekends. It feels like almost every single like weekend you're on in repeat, a row. Right? Right? Yeah, we, same there, thing here. Oh, yeah, a good thing, again. you know, for for getting outside and just still enjoying those last really nice days of fall. But it's like it's not never ending. Yeah, and, and um, been so good nice. good to go out and rake leaves, which is what my big plan for the week. That's my oh, big yeah. weekend. Getting good, the leaves well, up. Well, you're doing it right because especially with the brush fire risk, like that's really the time you want to do it. You want to make sure. Yeah, and typically a lot of times I in past years I might have a little thing in the backyard where I throw them in and, and burn them. Certainly not. We'll be will mm -hmm. not be doing that this year. Um, a lot of folks have been saying like, what do I do with my leaves if I can't burn them? Like call your town. Uh, a lot of folks have like. Um, mulching areas that you can bring your leaves to oh, that's and a good idea. put them out. So mm -hmm. a lot of different uh, possibilities, but certainly you don't want to burn them. Sunday, we're talking 60, 61 <laughs> degrees. Um, well, what's it. funny about that, what's nice is that, you know, it's funny because we're talking about now, I, all around the city, there's Christmas lights being strewn up. There's like, mm -hmm. um, people are making plans to go see the Christmas markets and we're talking 60 degrees. Is it too early? Like, does it feel a little early for the Christmas thing? Like, Honestly, after right after Halloween, it never feels early. After, okay, Halloween. For me, it's, <laughs> I feel like it's after Thanksgiving, but yeah. okay, Halloween, that's cool. Um, it's just funny because look how nice it's going to be. I mean, yeah, it doesn't feel like Christmas season. Um, and if you got tickets to the Pats game Sunday, like my goodness, like you definitely, <laughs> when you bought tickets, whenever you say you bought the tickets back in summer and you're like, oh man, we're going on November, whatever it is, 17th, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be either just raining miserable, or cold, cold. And wet and rainy. Uh, yeah, and here you go. It's like a <laughs> 60 sunny September and sunny. Day. Oh Not bad at all. And the Pats, maybe uh, they've been on a little bit of a roll. I mean, what is that? A September, a September Late September day. Yeah, kind of. Uh, I would, I would take it. We are looking. So out. you mentioned earlier with the um, the full supermoon, uh, and we do have sort of a storm that's uh, off in the Canadian Maritimes. Um, so we'll have that'll also be a little bit of an influence, but. Um, just before we came on today, they issued a coastal flood advisory um, for the high tide time late tomorrow morning. Uh, that's that light green area along the east coast of Massachusetts. Not a big deal unless you live right on the coastline. And if you do, you've certainly experienced this over the last several months um, during those like full moon periods. A little bit of splash over, you know, the, the typical areas that flood, there could be a little bit of coastal inundation. Not a major deal. Um, but just something to be aware of. If you're down in the seaport, like in Boston tomorrow morning, late tomorrow morning, um, some of those areas along the wharf get a little bit of water. Okay, good um, to know for planning because there is going to be plenty of people outside. Certainly will be plenty of people, yeah, but yeah for sure. Um, but no, nothing major. Thankfully, we don't have a major storm this weekend because it could have been a lot worse had, you know, in combination with that. And just to show you the tide times tomorrow morning, just before 11 a.m., um, flood stage is is 12 and a half feet, so just astronomically, it's all already gonna be close to that at 12 feet tomorrow morning, so it doesn't take much to get a little splash over. Mm. Um, and it go, drag, gradually goes down through early next week, but uh, just a, a typical sort of thing when you get a full moon um, or this close. But 
let's, we actually have some rain in the forecast. Hmm. Like for, do you do believe we it? Trust do you it? Believe yeah. it? Do we trust it is the question. <laughs> do we trust it? Um, yeah, good question. I think we've had a lot of forecasts over the last couple of weeks where it's like, oh, four or five days out, it looks mm -hmm. like it might rain. This is a little different. It's not just a cold front. It looks like a, there's a big trough that's gonna be forming in the middle part of the country. So this one I feel like has a better chance than some of our last mm. couple storms. Yeah, this could be the one to break through. This this looks significant. It certainly by all accounts looks like it could looks, give us some rain. Right, again, almost a week away. So, you know, we'll see. But, and you notice some white stuff on the map there too. That mm. would probably have some high elevation and snow down the Appalachians. But I do feel like next Thursday is probably our best shot that we've had in probably weeks, if not a month or two, of like some significant rainfall. Mm. Um, I mean, we don't, we need, we haven't, I don't think we've had uh, more than a half inch of rain since like early September from one storm. Right, so. yeah, all of our rain so far this year has been so heavy loaded, front loaded right. really in the, in the year. So early part of the year, yeah. this could really help us out. But again, being in that severe drought, it, it's, it's tough, but I do think I agree. This would be our best chance that we've seen in yep. quite a while. Yeah, so we'll be tracking, you can, you'll be tracking it this weekend. We'll obviously be tracking it next week. Any, I mean, if we could squeeze a half inch or an inch out, maybe that's the start of something different. And usually it takes a big sort of, a big sort of atmospheric event to flip a pattern. And like, it, like I wrote in the blog the other day, like a tropical storm or a hurricane or something, something to sort of shake things up in the jet stream and get us out of this right. pattern. Right, move things in. enough around. Yeah, and this one it may actually have some of the leftover energy or moisture from what's now tropical storm Sarah, which is way, way down in the Yucatan. Not expected to like come north in any sort of major way, but some of the remnants like moisture wise could get sucked into this one so that may help with a little bit of rain yeah and anything to push energy farther and farther east uh could help could help our case with that next thursday yeah so we'll we'll uh obviously be tracking it uh, i think that's all we got for today um okay. but well and if you haven't yet go check out terry's blog it is up on our website mm -hmm. wbz.com um really great stuff good information on potential winter snows and nice. we do have that winter forecast coming out is that thursday next thursday next yes thursday. can't wait we'll uh we'll see you this weekend okay. have a good weekend yeah have a great weekend